the talent that it takes to do the transformational innovation tends to have a you know, sort of deeper combination of analysis and synthesis put together. By and large, the design field is now strong enough and good enough with deep enough training and good enough methodology that if it's really about improving the known, you can create a deep capability around that using mostly people that come out of design schools. What I think of as the modern, you know, sort of disruptive innovation world, or we like to call it sophisticated innovation world, you probably need some great analytical capabilities inside of the enterprise you probably can't get the most disruptive innovations to occur just by creating a little tiny skunk works. What I prefer to do is to create a hunger for it at the top executive ranks and ideally to have it embedded in the metrics of the performance of those units, right? So there's no way to get disruptive innovation to happen that is anywhere near as effective as ensuring that you know somebody's bonus is tabbed to some level of radical reinvention of the of the business unit. But then here's the interesting thing, Jan, and this is not just true of Mayo, it's true of almost every enterprise where we've installed these kinds of systems. The ideal way to get it to happen organizationally is to sort of amplify it through the high potential young people. What I like to say is it's sort of a really nice pull and push function. You pull it by sort of attaching it to the performance metrics and the bonuses of the senior executives, and you make sure that the CEO sponsors it directly. You push it by sort of creating a capability as they've done at General Electric and Target and Best Buy and many other organizations where we've sort of shaped the innovation capabilities by making sure that the young people see it as a critical speed bump in their career trajectory that they have to be associated with authoring, de-risking, prototyping, and ultimately implementing a breakthrough innovation. Those combination of things is really ideal. Senior executives can't be counted on to take the nine months, roughly, that it takes to sort of do something really hard. Young people can be. But the young people doing it on their own rarely have the organizational authority to overcome all of the inevitable obstacles that manifest. So this nice idea of let's make sure we pull it through the enterprise by asking people to be associated with it. Let's make sure we also give it the talent that it requires to, to invest the time, the energy, the passion, ultimately the commitment to um, making it tangible and actionable. The way that the, the Center for Innovation is currently structured, uh, all of the projects are led by physicians. I'm not entirely sure that long term that's the right thing to do. It's very much the culture within Mayo that physicians lead everything. And, and I, can, I can see where that comes from. But I think it might be uh, uh, m that it might lead to more interesting and and sort of challenging solutions if some of these projects were run by designers, for instance, or or, or, or other people from within the within the organi organization, and uh, rather than always assuming that the physician has the the right set of skills or the right in insights and perspectives to, uh, to to lead the program, you can stage the development of a breakthrough innovation. You can say stage one is going to feel like this and stage two is going to feel like this and stage three is going to feel like this. They do all have sort of emotional journeys associated with them. They're a bit of a roller coaster ride. And I've been in many of these kinds of initiatives where people are incredibly incredibly passionate in the early days, you know, and they start to create a fantastic prototype and lots of evidence that the consumers, you know, will love it. And, and then they discover that for a variety of reasons, the idea is uh, technically illegal and um, can, in fact, be executed in this form. And that, of course, sends their emotional um, trajectory right into the sub-basement. But what happens is, when you prepare people for that, you can help them to see the act of disruptive innovation, the act of sophisticated innovation, as sort of managing this emotional trajectory over time. And what I like 
to do is to embrace the underlying sort of hard challenges and to be really clear with people about saying, we want to do this great thing, don't we agree? And everybody, you know, it's the easy thing for people to agree to. See, again and again, it's important to understand people are in favor of innovation, but it routinely fails. Why is that? Because the easy bit is to imagine an exciting future. The hard bit is to figure out how to get past the status quo. And there's, again, like so many of the things um, that are at the heart of modern innovation, there's an essential tension there, some trade-offs you have to manage.